Thank you, Jed. Uh, and thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, really excited to be here. My name's Camilla. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Mapbox. Uh, specifically, I work on all things imagery related. Uh, you know, it's processing, publishing, distributing. Um, please find me on Twitter uh, if you guys have questions and we don't get a chance to talk today. Uh, happy to answer any questions or curiosities. <clears throat> so uh, Mapbox, for those who don't know, uh, is a web mapping platform for maps of all kinds. Um, you know, we provide global, uh, global data sets for streets, terrain, imagery, um, and we provide data styling tools. Uh, we provide data hosting services so that you can bring your own data and mash it up with ours or just display your own uh, kind of in a vacuum but on our infrastructure. Um, we do this both for vector and raster data, uh, so I work on the raster side of things. Uh, and I like to break our work up into um, three main categories for the imagery team. And I'll talk a little bit about each one of these and then about how we leverage AWS um, to make all of this work. Uh, so the categories that you guys are gonna hear about are base map maintenance, uh, client publishing, and then our research and development. Uh, so starting with base map maintenance, um, you know, what does it mean to really publish, uh, publish a global base map? Uh, for us, it means working with imagery uh, from a bunch of different resolutions uh, at different frequencies, you know, different frequencies that we want to update it. Um, and imagery that's delivered in tons of different formats uh, requires different types of pre-processing. Um, and building a global base map also means providing a view of the world um, from the most zoomed out point of view, where you can see every continent at the same time, uh, to a really, really zoomed in view, uh, where you can see individual buildings and roads, construction cranes, livestock, sheep in their fields. Um, and at the most zoomed out level, uh, we use MODIS and Landsat data. Uh, these are both freely available data sets, uh, Landsat now available through the public data sets on AWS. Um, and these are you know, collected and distributed by NASA and USGS and now uh, AWS. Uh, these images are packaged very consistently, uh, so we've been able to access a time series of imagery data uh, from these two sources and process them into a mosaic that prefers the height of summer um, and least cloudy scenes collected by these sensors over the course of two to three years. Uh, this gives you that kind of endless summer look that you get from a lot of global imagery base maps. Um, and at this landscape level, you know, cha change can't be seen at a super like fine, fine-grained uh, level. And so we will update our most zoomed out levels of the base map every three to five years, maybe. Um, when we zoom in further, uh, processing tasks change. Uh, so we're working at a higher spatial resolution. Imagery collection swaths are much smaller. Uh, and the number and types of imagery providers that we work with uh, grows to a very large number. Um, so at this, at this scale, we're working with aerial imagery collections like this one. This is um, an aerial collection from the Danish government. Um, you know, freely avail available aerial imagery uh, that was in kind of an ugly legacy format that we had to re-wrangle into something that was usable for us. Um, and you know, we were working with the Danish government who had never distributed this imagery um, at the large scale that we requested. Um, and then we have imagery from commercial satellite imagery providers, uh, like this high-res imagery from Digital Globe. Um, we've got uh, the added complexity of multiple incoming imagery formats when you try to mash this up with something like uh, the imagery that we have from the Danish government. Um, you know, and all of these images that we try to stitch together have slightly different resolutions, um, have been collected by very different pieces of hardware, uh, and we need to normalize all that to a point where we can you know, stitch them together and make a sing single seamless mosaic. Um, at this very high resolution, we also need to consider the fact that uh, smaller changes are more noticeable. Um, so, you know, if a single new building goes up from one year to the next and you're looking at a MODIS image, nobody is going to notice. Um, if you are looking at a sub-meter spatial resolution where folks can recognize roads that they've traveled, uh, you know, points of interest that they visited, you better bet that they're going to notice if a building isn't there. Um, so at this resolution, we're wanting to update imagery uh, much more frequently than at the Landsat and MODIS, MODIS, um, MODIS resolutions. Uh, so those are just a few challenges associated with base map maintenance. Uh, I'm going to move on to client publishing uh, for a few minutes and talk about the imagery needs of our customers uh, that we're set up to handle. Um, so there are a few ways to publish your imagery to Mapbox. Uh, you can upload individual TIFFs to mapbox.com, just uh, right on the website. We also have an upload API that we can expose to, uh, to customers, uh, so you can do batch uploads. 
Uh, and then we also, uh, for enterprise customers, we'll expose our entire backend production processing pipeline um, for like really, really large processing tasks. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the latter two uh, just because the volume is more interesting than the individual TIFF uploads. Um, so this is an example of uh, drone imagery uh, uploaded directly to mapbox.com via the upload API from a field collection. Uh, so we work with folks uh, like Pix4D and Drone Deploy to create uh, tie-ins to their software platforms um, to give folks instant access to a published product once they've done a flyover. Uh, so this is really exciting because um, once the product is published, it can be used in any application. Uh, so this drone imagery, for instance, uh, was taken on the ground in Vanuatu this past March, um, right after Cyclone Pam hit. Uh, so publishing this imagery to the web directly from the field enabled same-day um, damage assessments to occur. Um, so we're also opening up our back-end processing capabilities to, fo to folks who want to publish at a larger scale. Um, some of you I know are familiar with Digital Globe. Uh, Shay spoke earlier today. Uh, and for those who don't know DG that well, um, they're one of the leading providers of high-resolution imagery in the world. Uh, they've been in the game for many years and have just an incredible catalog of imagery that you know, covers the world many times over. Uh, DG is now, just as of the last few months, serving uh, a very large chunk of their commercially available imagery uh, on the Mapbox platform. Uh, this has meant for us um, processing and publishing literally petabytes of data over the last few months. Um, and this is all to private maps that DG then uh, you know, owns, owns the access to and can pro provide people API access keys to, um, to then access. Um, and this is all possible, you know, working at these multiple scales is all possible because of uh, the software that we've written and deployed on AWS's scalable infrastructure. Um, this is a picture of Hong Kong, for those who are curious. <laughs> uh, one of my favorites. Um, so similar to the drone imagery that I showed you in the last segment, um, publishing imagery on a fast and flexible platform like Mapbox means that this imagery is usable immediately and in a wide variety of applications. Uh, so on the Friday that Hurricane Patricia was slated to hit Mexico just a few weeks ago, um, you know, we and DG were able to open up access to uh, DG's Mexico country mosaic uh, for the Red Cross and for other disaster relief organizations uh, who were prepping for the storm. Um, and they were you know, able to simply expose an API token uh, and make this imagery available for tracing. Um, a few days later, uh, the same exact type of quick response uh, was able to be made uh, to the earthquake in Afghanistan. Um, so the third section uh, of our work that I'll touch on is research and development. Um, this is the time that we spend on projects like Landsat Live. Uh, Landsat Live is our constantly updating map of the world that is fed throughout the day every day uh, by incoming Landsat data, uh, absolutely powered by uh, the AWS public data set. Um, and it's these types of projects where we push on the bounds of what we're capable of, where we have learned uh, how to create live updating, constantly active pipelines, um, and where we've learned to um, design ways for you to interact with the metadata of imagery, so serving um, you know, the data behind the pixels in addition to the pixels. Um, and this is just an example of a demo that we built um, where you can zoom in um, and access the backend uh, information for um, any Landsat scene that you're viewing. Um, so that's uh, kind of like a very tight wrap of the major types of projects uh, that we're managing on a daily basis. Uh, on the imagery team at Mapbox. Um, but what this really all comes down to uh, is one major thing, and that's computing resources. <laughs> um, so I like to think of uh, us in the office as this little green guy writing our software. Um, and then <laughs> the next green guy uh, is the internet, where we just kind of send our code, deploy it. The internet does its thing, and it sends it to AWS's uh, computers who kind of do the little software dance. and process our imagery and, and do all the wrangling that we ask it to. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, and you know, we do this all at a huge scale. Um, we do this for the world many times over uh, at all of, these, all of these different resolutions that I've talked to you about. Um, and 
as you've seen through our, you know, through the maintenance of our own base map and through uploads and hosting for individual clients um, and Landsat Live, um, we're doing this all simultaneously. Um, so this is uh, a chat room that we had set up for a little while, um, for a brief period, uh, that reports on the image processing tasks that we're running uh, and rolling in as we're getting done so that we can kind of track the progress and check in on things, see if they're getting kicked out of the pipeline for whatever reason. Um, and very, very quickly, uh, as we scaled up our processing, uh, we had to disconnect the service so that we didn't DDoS Slack. Um, <laughs> we kept getting these throttle messages uh, and uh, eventually just turned off our webhook. Um, but you can see here, this is on the order of tens of thousands of messages every 30 minutes. Um, so that's, that's the scale that AWS is enabling us to work at. Um, so in addition to running many different instance types uh, across many different availability zones uh, for you know, very fast, very optimized processing, um, we're also able to replicate our storage um, of our end product to nodes all over the world, um, allowing us to like, incredibly efficiently serve our imagery to our end users. Um, so you know, if you're in Virginia and you're requesting tiles, um, we will send them to you from Virginia. But if you're in Afghanistan um, requesting imagery tiles, we'll probably send them to you from India. Um, so going forward and uh, just to kind of like wrap up before we go to questions, um, a few things that we know about the imagery industry. Um, we know that the future is really high res. Um, and it's high res in a number of different ways. Um, it's high res in a spatial resolution where we're getting more detailed imagery than ever before. Um, it's spectrally high res where sensors are constantly increasing the amount of information uh, across the electromagnetic spectrum that they can procure. Um, it's temporally high res, where collections uh, are becoming much more frequent, and people are wanting to um, publish and make available all of these high res products, uh, kind of like right now. Um, and what we say to that is like, yes, absolutely. Um, let's publish it. Uh, let's make it available now. Let's make it available to people all over the globe. Uh, and let's make it really as easy as sharing, um, sharing a URL or an API token. Um, and so that's what I've got. <laughs>